from WIS Politics in Madison. You're listening to Capital Chats. Welcome to WIS Politics Capital Chats, brought to you by Spectrum. I'm Audrey Thiebert, and today I'm here with reporter Kate Morton about an interview she did with Michelle Banke of the American Bar Association. Banke's the president-elect. Kate, so what did you guys talk about in your interview? So she is actually going to be the second Wisconsin attorney to lead the American Bar Association, and she'll be taking on the position next year. So we talked a little bit about that, and we also talked a little bit about her background in Wisconsin and her being the first person of color and the fourth woman to lead the State Bar Association. Wow, sounds interesting. Let's get into the interview. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me on Capital Chats today. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So to get started off, maybe we can talk a little bit about your background Um, in Wisconsin. You have a practice in Madison. So could you say a little bit more about yourself and your connection to the state? Sure. So uh, my dad was in the Air Force and uh, there used to be an Air Force base here in Madison, Truex, on the north side of town. That's what brought our family to Madison. Um, And when he completed his service in the Air Force, our family just stayed. So I've been here since I was three. Uh, And then when I was getting ready for college, um, I thought about leaving the state. (laughs) Uh, And in fact, even applied to the University of Washington, the state of Washington. Um, But then being that far away from home seemed like a pretty big, (laughs) pretty big step. And I ended up staying and I went to the University of Wisconsin as an undergrad in economics and then also stayed for law school. So um, not born here, but here since I was three. Um, And I just love the Madison community. And when I got done with law school, just really wanted to stay and build my practice here as well. I met my my husband in law school and we both um, wanted to practice here in Madison. Yeah, could you tell us a little about about your practice and what you do there? Sure. So over my career, I started out as a brand new lawyer uh, with a medium-sized Madison law firm, um, and my practice was focused on business. Um, But my husband and I were also um, starting our family and had two little kids, So I was looking for that ever elusive uh, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And I went in-house at uh, what was then called CUNA Mutual. um, And I did that for about five years. Um, But I really missed direct client work um, that I had experienced as as a new lawyer. And so in 1998, I went out on my own and formed my own uh, law practice. And that really gave me the ability to have direct connections with my clients um, and to help them from the very beginning of their business or buying a house, those kinds of things. So for 26 years, I did that. Um, But then as I um, took on more leadership within the ABA, I realized I wasn't going to be able to balance um, solo practice. And um, so I moved uh, just recently, August 1, to the Boardman Clark Law Firm. Yeah, thank you for sharing some of your background with us. So um, to give some context for our listeners, you're also the first person of color and the fourth woman to lead the State Bar Association. Could you talk a little bit about that milestone for you? Sure. So when I first started practicing, um, people within the firm um, encouraged me to be active within the state bar. Um, And I met other practitioners who were at the same stage in life and in career. Um, And that was really um, helpful to me. You know, sometimes you don't know what normal is. (laughs) You don't know if you're progressing at the right level, et cetera. So I found that really helpful. But when I looked around, I didn't see practitioners that looked like me very much engaged in the state bar work. Um, Wisconsin is an integrated bar or a mandatory bar. So I knew that there were practitioners. I just didn't see them as um, engaged in the state bars work. And I wondered why that was um, and wondered if there was something I could do to work um, to change that. Um, The first woman president, Pam Barker, uh, when I talked to her about that, um, she kind of said, take it away. <laughs> what, what are your ideas, right? Um, and, and gave me agency to think about and work on those. And, and so I did. And once I started working on those issues, 
again, you know, you put me in a room with other lawyers who are all trying to solve a problem. And I find that really exhilarating. And so that work just continued to lead to other work and other engagement within the state bar. Um, and then shortly after I went out on my own, um, each year the nominating committee looks for um, people to run for the positions and they approached me and I thought, why don't I give it a shot? <laughs> and so I, I ran and I was successful and became the fourth woman and the first person of color um, in to lead the State Bar of Wisconsin. Yeah. Do you feel like things have improved since the when you first joined the State Bar? Or do you think there's like still room for growth for diversity? What are your thoughts on that? It certainly has changed. Um, when I look around, if you look at the State Bar magazine, if you look at who's attending meetings, um, there is certainly much more engagement and much more um, involvement. And, and that feels great um, when you're sitting in a room and you're not the only, but there's always room for improvement. When I served as State Bar President, um, I got the opportunity to travel the state and I talked about diversity um, in every uh, avenue I could. And sometimes, um, like when I was in Northern Wisconsin, um, one of the things that I did was I tried to help people understand that diversity is not just racial and ethnic. It really is who's not at the table. So in some of the Northern areas, it might be young lawyers who were not engaged in the County Bar Association. It might be women. Um, and so the message is not just racial and ethnic diversity. It really is more an issue of inclusion and making sure that people both feel welcome and that you get the opportunity to draw on the experiences and the work of all of the people in your community. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So with your upcoming role, you're the ABA, American Bar Association president-elect, you're going to be taking that on next year. Um, so you'll actually be the second Wisconsin attorney to lead the ABA. So maybe you could say a bit more about how that feels. Well, it really is amazing. Um, as wonderful as I think of Madison and Wisconsin, um, when you think of a national organization, Madison probably isn't uh, the first place that you think of as the, you know, kind of the hub. Um, so I feel incredibly fortunate. Um, as I started down this road, I actually looked up that information and the first person was uh, a lawyer by the name of Carl Ricks, um, who was based in Milwaukee, but it was 1946. <laughs> um, so it's been a very long time, but um, it really is to me proof that if you're interested and you want to give back to your community and your profession, it really doesn't matter where you come from. And the thoughts that you have about what is going on in the profession, if you want to share that and work on those issues, it doesn't really matter where you're from. So I feel incredibly fortunate and a little special that I'm only the second person from Wisconsin. Yeah, definitely. So when you do end up officially taking up the role, what do you hope to achieve? Well, we've just completed a strategic plan uh, for the ABA. And um, like any organization, you, um, you, our scope is, is very broad, um, but it's hard to be all things to all people. And so right now I'm very focused on implementation, trying to figure out where we can make the most impact um, and how we can help support lawyers in their practice and connect them to the important work of the ABA. Um, although I've just recently joined Boardman Clark, um, 26 years as a solo practitioner, um, I understand firsthand what solo and small firm lawyers are facing. And so I wanna make sure I speak to the solo and small firm um, practitioners and help them understand how much the ABA has available to help them in their practice um, and to support them in their practice and then to connect them to that work that they might find um, really important, be it um, work on immigration or homelessness and poverty or democracy. Um, we have a breadth of work and um, it's, it's pretty incredible to get um, connected to that and to, to play a role in that. I also want to make sure that we're paying some attention to the younger lawyers. Um, 
we have lots of data and information that's telling us that new lawyers are coming out with um, more debt um, than ever before. Um, they are delaying life experiences like um, getting married or having children or buying houses. Um, and they're facing stress and anxiety of, over the practice of law and getting started. So those are issues that I would um, like to spend some time and focus on because if you as a lawyer are stressed and full of anxiety, it's pretty hard to um, you know, be there for your clients as well. Yeah, sure. Were there any areas that you had challenges with as um, in your practice that you kind of want to do some outreach to other people in your new role? Sure. As a solo practitioner, when I opened my office, I had been practicing for about 10 years. So I felt pretty comfortable in my subject matter, but I really knew nothing about actually operating a law practice. Um, you know, your trust account and client selection and how to market yourself and how to, um, you know, just take care of the business side of uh, practicing law. Um, and that's where I found a lot of resources within the ABA um, that really helped me um, so that I could both be good at practice, but also be good at running the practice. And that's an area that I really want to make sure that I share with other solo and small firm practitioners. Yeah, sure. Well, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap it up on this? Well, I'm incredibly honored. Um, and some days I feel a little overwhelmed when you think of leading a national association, but I am constantly reminded that lawyers across the country give an awful lot to their communities and to the profession. So the good news is I'm not really doing this alone. I get to join together with lawyers all across the country um, to both try and improve our profession and support lawyers and to make a difference within our communities. So while I may be leading, I'm not doing it by myself. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us on the podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. All right, Kate, thanks for sharing your interview. If listeners want to learn more, they can visit our website at wispolitics.com. For now, I'm Audrey Thiebert. I'm Kate Morton. And this is Wisp Politics Capital Chat, sponsored by Spectrum.